is the story of an ordinary little boy named Charlie Bucket. His family were not rich or powerful or well connected. In fact, they barely had enough to eat. But Charlie was the luckiest boy in the entire world. He just didn't know it yet. I saw Willy Wonka, the famous chocolatier with my very eyes, you know. I used to work for her. I don't believe it. Really? I did. No. Are you sure it was the Willy Wonka? The one. The only. She began with a little candy store just down the street, and soon she became the greatest chocolatier of all time. Everyone was jealous of her, and when spies began breaking in to steal her recipes, she shut down forever. Grandpa, you're lying. It's open right now. I always see smoke coming from the chimneys. Oh yeah, it did close for a while, but when it reopened, nobody got their jobs back. But then, who runs the machines? Nobody knows. It's a mystery. It was no coincidence that Charlie and his grandpa were talking about Willy Wonka that night, for Wonka had a big announcement to make. Who can take your sunrise, sprinkle it with dew, cover it in chocolate and a miracle or two, the candy man, oh the candy man can, the candy man can, because he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. Who can take a rainbow, wrap it in a star, soak it in the sun and make a strawberry lemon pie, the candy man, oh the candy man can, the candy man can because he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. Dear people of the world, I, Willy Wonka, have decided to invite five children into my factory this year. One of those children will receive a special prize better than anything you could ever imagine. Five golden tickets were hidden under the ordinary wrappings of paper of five ordinary Wonka bars. These five candy bars were everywhere and anywhere, all over the world. One by one, the golden tickets revealed themselves. First, Augusta Gloop. I was eating a Wonka bar and I tasted something that was not fruit or caramel or chocolate or peanuts or nuts. And I looked and I found a golden ticket and I celebrated by eating more chocolate. The second, Violet Beauregard. I have lots of trophies. I'm a world champion of chewing gum and I'm a karate champion. I was always going to win the golden ticket because I'm a winner and that's what winners do. They win. Thirdly, Veruca Salt. I saw that Wonka guy give a speech about the tickets and I just had to have one. So I had my father put a team together to get me one. Then he got me another pony. Our fourth ticket was found by Millie TV. It was very easy. All I had to do was hack into the manufacturing systems and get the dates and delivery routes. Not just anyone could have done it, but trust me, I've hacked into much harder systems. Once I figured it out, I bought one candy bar, and boom, golden ticket. I don't even like chocolate. <laughs> With only one ticket left, the impossible was about to happen. It's a golden ticket. I found it, the last golden ticket. Greetings to you, the lucky finder of this golden ticket from Mr. Willy Wonka. I invite you to come to my factory for one whole day. I will conduct you around myself, showing you everything there is to see. And remember, one of you lucky five children will receive an extra special prize. A prize beyond your wildest imaginations. Now here are your instructions. On the 1st of February, meet, the, meet at the factory gates at 10 a.m. I will be waiting. Until then, Willy Wonka. Dear visitors, welcome to my chocolate factory. And who am I? Well, I'm Willy Wonka, of course, the amazing chocolatier. I am modest and clever and oh, very smart. I have so much generosity, there's no way I could ever contain it. I'm the best person to have ever lived. And did I mention I'm an amazing chocolatier? 
It really is Willy Wonka. My daughter is a huge fan of your chocolate, Mr. Wonka. Miss Wonka, I don't know if you remember me, but I used to work here in the factory. Mrs. Wonka, don't you want us to introduce you to our children? This here is Veruca. She is oh so deserving of your prize. Parents, guardians, please relax. For this adventure isn't about you, it's about the kids. So zip it. Now, on with the tour. Loads to see in such a little time. <laughs> Come with me, and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look, and you'll see into your imagination. a chocolate factory. The waterfall makes the chocolate and no other factory in the world mixes chocolate like this. Wow, it's beautiful. Ew, what a disgusting dirty river. It's industrial waste that is. It's pollution. Ever heard of global warming? It's chocolate. A chocolate river? I hate chocolate, but that is the most fantastic thing I've ever seen. Daddy, I want a chocolate river. Get me one. Very well, I'll get you one for the days out. Mmm, this stuff is terrific. I need a bucket to drink it properly. Grandpa, look at Augusta. Augusta had quietly sneaked down to the edge of the river. She was scooping the chocolate into her mouth as fast as she could. Don't worry, she can't drink it all. Oh, Augusta, don't do that. My chocolate must never be touched by human hands. Ag Augusta, seriously, stop. Augusta, you're contaminating the whole river. Augusta! But Augusta was deaf to everything except the call of her enormous stomach. Suddenly, Augusta tips over the edge and splash! <laughs> my daughter! My daughter! Where does that pipe go? That pipe just so happens to lead to the room where I make the most delicious strawberry-flavored chocolate-coated fudge. Then she will be made into strawberry-flavored chocolate-coated fudge. They'll be selling her by the pound all over the world. No. I wouldn't allow it. The taste would be horrible. Head that way and the Oompa Loompas will show you where to find her. Bye now. Now, on with the tour. The next room was gigantic. It was like a witch's kitchen with metal pots bubbling and boiling on huge stoves. The room was filled with steam and rich and delicious smells. Should we all be wearing masks and rubber gloves? 
You'll have health inspectors coming after you. You know come that, don't you? Come along now, come along. Welcome to the invention room. I'd like to show you my latest and greatest invention. Look! It's gum. It's a piece of the most amazing, sensational gum ever. This gum is a full three-course meal, all in one piece. Why would anyone want that? Because it's the only thing you'll ever need for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This gum is a full three-course meal. It's tomato soup, roast beef, and blueberry pie. It sounds great. It sounds weird. It sounds like my kind of gum. No, don't. It's not ready yet. Before mm. Wonky could stop her, she'd pop the gum right into her mouth. The world record chewer had made a huge mistake. What's going on? Is she turning blue? Whoa, I can see it too. She is turning blue. Violet, listen to me. Head that way and the Oompa will help you. Before you turn into a blueberry. Go! What's going to happen to her? They're going to squeeze her, like a little pimple. Squeeze all of that juice right out. Now, let's boogie. We have a schedule to keep to. This is Wonka. What is your special fries? The best kind of fries. Ah, surprise. Will Violet always be a blueberry? Yeah. No. Maybe. I don't know. Who cares? Gums disgusting. Then why'd you make it? Question time's over. Hear that sound? That's the sound of the nutcracking room in operation. Now, we can't go in there today as the squirrels are having a day off. And the last thing I'd want to do is put any of you in danger. Squirrels? You use squirrels? Miss Wonka, why use squirrels and not use Oompa Loompas? Because only a squirrel can get the whole walnut out almost every single time. The old Wonka secret. And they're the best thing at finding a bad nut. I'm one of the squirrels. Uh, very well. Um, Mr. Wonka, how much do you want for one of your squirrels? Name your price. Oh, no, they're not for sale. She can't have one. If you won't let me have one, I'll get one myself. No, don't. Little girl, the squirrels will. The moment Brew get into the room, 100 squirrels stopped what they're doing and stared at her. She had made a mistake. <coughs> What's going to happen to her? They're going to test to see if she's a bad nut. <coughs> and by goodness, is she a bad nut. She's going to go where all the bad nuts go. The rubbish chute. I beg your pardon? <coughs> Might I suggest following her down the chute? It's really the only way to save her. Bye now. This is turning out to be a delightful day. To the TV room we met. Welcome to the TV room. I'd like to show you my greatest invention, TV chocolate. Imagine children just reaching your hand into the TV screen and grabbing yourself a delicious Wonka bear. That is impossible. Look, Wonka, you don't know anything about science. And if you did, you'd realize what you had created, a teleporting machine. That would be the greatest invention ever. All you care about is chocolate. Calm down, young lady. I'm sure Miss Wonka knows what she's talking about. No, she doesn't. She thinks she's a genius, but she's an idiot. You want teleportation? I'll give you teleportation. Stand in here, right in there. And on the count of three, we're going to teleport you from over there to over there. Is this safe? I don't know, but we're about to find out. Three, two, one. It worked. No, it didn't. She shrunk to the size of an insect. We may have to take her to a special taffy pulling machine. It's OK, little girl. The squirrels will help you. What's going to happen to her and all the other kids? Miss Wonka, I'm the only one left. I promise you, Shelley. All the kids that came here to today will be just the same as when they arrived. So don't worry about them. Miss Wonka, with Charlie being the only one left, does he get the surprise? Of course he does. Charlie, I would like to hand my entire factory over to you. I need a good person to take care of all the special recipes, and you're the one to do it. You passed the test. You won. So that's why you sent out the tickets. I hope you're both ready to move in here with me. Yippee! Yippee! <laughs> in the end, Charlie Bucket won a chocolate factory, and Willy Wonka got something even better. Two new friends to share her chocolate factory with. 
And one thing was absolutely certain. Life had never been sweeter. There was once a poor orphan named James who was claimed by two horrible people. They, they said they were his aunties and they brought him to their home and made him do a ton of awful chores. One chore in particular involved him having to chop down a gigantic peach tree. And this is where our story begins. There he is. Oh, my dear lovely cousin. A nephew. <laughs> nephew. Oh, my dear little nephew. Jack. It's James. Oh, Jeff, how we've missed you. <laughs> Welcome to the family, you disgusting little beast. Is this where you live? You see that cottage on top of the hill? That's where me and Sponge live. And where will I stay? In the dirt cellar. We only claimed you because we need some help around here. How the little beast cut down that giant peach down the hill beside the tree? I see my friends playing in the distance. Do you think we would visit the seashore? Not when there's work to be done. Here are, little monkey now. Take this axe and chop down that rotten giant peach. We're sick of it blocking our view down the hill. And kill every creepy crawly thing you find. And should you think of running away, just remember... We're the, We're the only, only family, family you've got. Ha! ha. I'm starving. Everyone's famished. We need food. Well, whatever are we to eat? You're not going to eat me. I'm afraid of a bit of misunderstanding. We wouldn't dream of hurting you, boy. You're one of the crew. You must be frightened, little boy. You're one of us now. Pop it in the Dutch and zone order. How do you do? I'm Grasshopper. And I'm Spider. And I'm Centipede. Taking me is the one who's going to eat you when you're asleep. <laughs> what are you? We're instant, of course. Fire peach started to shake and creak. Suddenly there was a huge noise and the stem of the peach snapped from the tree, causing everybody inside to fall. As soon as the peach hit the ground, it began to slowly roll down the steep hill. It got faster and faster and faster. It even crushed Auntie Spiker and Sponge along the way. Ew! I'll, it continued to roll and roll until it went splash. The peach had landed in the ocean. Unbelievable! Impossible! We're floating in the ocean. 
My friend will find himself in a rather awkward position. We'll, we'll drown. But we're not sinking at all. So, guys, where do you suppose we're heading? Definitely France. Then we should be across the channel and on dry land in no time at all. Do you think that this um, reminds me of my younger days? So I came the road. No would GTA and she took out my food on. We've got no booze! No water! What are we gonna do? Back at the ant's house, trouble was brewing. A peach nearly killed me. The thing ran right over us. And then rolled far away. Spiker's the boy. What's to become of him? If he doesn't come back, we could be in a whole lot of trouble. This is bad, Spikers. It's worse than bad. We could go to jail. I can't go to jail. Quick, we gotta make a getaway before anyone traces that peach back to us. Too late, Spikers. Are those police sirens? And helicopters. Quick, we gotta pack up our junk and make a getaway. I'll crack open our piggy bank. Where are we going? We'll book a cruise to the Bahamas. Splendid idea, Spikes. We both could use a vacation. Back in the middle of the ocean, trouble had also found its way there. James and his insect friends had found themselves surrounded by sharks and seagulls. Spider, is your web strong? The strongest in the world. Perfect. We'll loop Spider's web around the seagull's neck and tie it to the other end to the stem of the peach. Oh, and how are you meant to do that, genius? Bait. I find it incredibly insensible. This is never going to work. Hey, seagulls, over here. Oh, I don't like this at all. Here comes the first one. Got him. Well done, James. Come and get it, you stupid seagulls. Please don't let them catch me. Got him. Here, take some more of my web. Got him! Don't worry, Grasshopper, buddy or pal. We'll never let them touch you. Got him! Hooray! Yeah. <laughs> 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 the seagull struggled and squawked as James triumphantly tied the web rope to the stem of the peach. They pulled the peach up into the air, guided by the seagulls. The water below soon began to look so teeny tiny below them. That's the Empire State Building. We travelled across the whole Atlantic Ocean to New York City. Isn't that remarkable? We're safe, safe at last. Well, Wait. so they thought. Without going into too much graphic detail, an airplane soon came flying by and it may have sliced right through the web strings. So the peach plummeted towards the earth. Men, women and children screamed. The world was thought to be ending and then BAM! The peach landed on the spire of the Empire State Building, saving James and his insect friends from the ground below. Once upon a time there was a vulture and a hawk Living in a house up on a hill And this little boy who lived with them, they worked him like a dog with any look, they'd have him up their sill. Along came a magic hand with a magic bag full of nasty little green things in a funky old rag. He said, boy, you may not know it, but this is how it is. You see, son, you're going down in history. Good news is blowing in your window. Good news is knocking on your door. Good news is coming round the corner. Good news is rolling round the floor. Where can all my troubles be? Must be good news chasing me. Good enough to set everybody free. Good news, good news. When I grow up, I will 
be tall enough to reach the branches that I need to reach to climb. You get to climb when you're grown up. And when I grow up, I will hate sweets every day. On the way to work, and I will go to bed late every night. And I will wake up when the sun comes up, and I will watch cartoons until my eyes go square. And I won't care, cause I'll be all grown up when I grow up. When I grow up, when I grow up, when I grow up, I will be strong enough to carry all the heavy things you have to hold around with you when you're a grown You get to climb when you're grown up. Matilda was one of the smartest kids in the world, but her parents were not very nice. Matilda read all the time, and she got bored of watching TV at home. She really wanted to go to school. This is Agatha Trunchbull. Principal, crunch him all elementary school. I warn you, sir, I want a tight car because I run a tight ship. I think all children need to be punished when they are bold. If you want your daughter, Matilda, to get in shape, send her into me. You, detention, you're too small, grow up quicker. Heads up, shoulders back, stomachs in, sit up straight. Hey, are you new here? Hi, I am new here. Is that our teacher? No, that's the principal, Miss Trunchbull. She's just horrible. Our teacher's name is Miss Honey. She's much nicer than Trunchbull, so don't be worried. I'm Alice. I'm Matilda. Lavender, watch out for the Trunchbull. I'm Nigella. Yeah, be careful you'll be sent to the Chokey. The chokey? Yeah, the chokey. It's a small hole in the wall behind a door. You have to stand in there, and the walls have broken glass with nails sticking out. I've been in there twice, and it won't be long before I make that hole once. Sometimes she leaves you in there all day. It's so scary. Make sure you behave. M Matilda's teacher, Miss Honey, was a lovely person and a great teacher. Okay, listen up, children. We have a new student with us today. This is Matilda. Hi, Matilda. Well, Matilda, you've come, on, you've come on a very good day because we're going to be reviewing everything we've learned so far. If you do know an answer, just raise your hand, okay? Now, we've been working on the two times tables. Let's do some together. Two times four is? Alice? Eight. Well done, Alice. Two times six is? Nigella? Thirteen. No. Twelve. Twelve. I got it. I said twelve, Miss. Excellent, you've been practicing. Pretty soon you'll all be able to do in like, I don't know, 13 times 379. 4,927. Wow, Matilda, when did you learn how to multiply big numbers? I read this book last year on mathematics in the library. You like to read? Yes, I love to read. Fantastic, Matilda. All right, children, take out your workbooks. Let's start with section three. I'll be back in a moment. Come in, come in, whoever you are. Ah, oh, Miss Honey, time for one of our little heart-to-hearts. Actually, it's about the new girl in my class, Miss Trunchbull. Matilda, she is a very bright child. <laughs> a bright child? Yes, um, she can multiply large sums in her head. So can a calculator. Well, I think she might be happier in an older and more advanced class. 
Ah, oh, I knew it. You can't handle the little viper, so you're trying to get rid of her. Typical. How cowardly. You know what? I think I will take her. Oh, of course not. Maybe I will keep her in my class then after all. With Trunchbull terrorizing her school, it was a rare and happy moment when Matilda could just play with her friends. A frog, a frog, a frog, a frog! That's not a frog. What is it? It's a new strange. Where is Miss Honey? Miss Trunchbull teaches our class today. Oh no, hurry, give me the new. Quick, put away everything colorful. Matilda had a clever idea. She quietly placed the newt in a glass of water. Shh, don't tell Trunchable. I will be teaching your class today. It's a snake, it's a snake, it's a snake. One of you tried to poison me. Who? Oh, Matilda, I knew it. I didn't do it. Liar, you were going to the chokey. For what, Miss Trunchula? She didn't do anything. For this newt. How could she possibly have done it when she was sitting way over here? I'll be watching you, each and every one of you. They're all yours. You all go outside. I'll be out there in a minute. Miss Honey, I made the glass tip over. Oh, Matilda, don't let Miss Honey make you feel that way. Nobody did it. It was an accident. I did it with my eyes. I just stare very hard and my eyes feel powerful. I feel like I can move almost anything in the world. You do believe me, don't you? I believe that you should believe in whatever power you think you have inside of you. No kid likes being yelled at, but it was Trunchable's ranting and raving that gave Matilda the key to her power. Miss Honey, I, I took your old doll from Trunchable's house. I will be teaching your class today. In the time it took Miss Honey to get very, very nervous, Matilda had come up with a plan. Miss Honey, what is the name your father used to call you? Hummingbird? Bumblebean. I'm sure she knows the doll's missing. Sit, sit, quickly. I bet you're wondering what this is about. Hmm? A child came into my house and stole a doll from me. I don't know when, I don't know why, and I don't know how. Do any of you recognize this? Miss Trunchbull, I was the one who was at your house last night. Actually, it was me. I broke into your house. That is my ribbon. Alice, you do not need to cover for me. It was me, Miss Trunchbull. I stole the doll. No, it was me. Time to send me to the cold field now. Look, the chalk. It's running by itself. It says, Trunchbull, this is Magnus. Give my little bumblebee back her house and her money. Then get out of town. If you don't, I will get you. That is a promise. And the Trunchbull was gone, never to be seen or heard from never to darken a doorway again. Miss Honey moves back into her father's old house. Matilda, your parents just called. You need to get home and they said you're moving away. I don't want to move. I love it here, I love the school. This isn't fair. Miss Honey, adopt me. Matilda, that is a really big decision. One second, I got the adoption papers from the library if you want to sign them. Matilda and Miss Honey went to get the paper signed by Matilda's parents. Miss Honey was made principal of Crunchum Hall and every kid was happy. But the happiest part of the story was that Matilda and Miss Honey have gotten what they've always wanted, a loving family. We are revolting children living in revolting times. We sing revolting songs. Music, revolting rhymes, we'll be revolting children till our revolting sun, and we'll have trust revolting, we're revolting. We are revolting children living in revolting times. We sing revolting songs, music, revolting rhymes, we'll be revolting children till our revolting.
bolting stone, and we'll have trunch pull bolting. We're revolting. We'll become a screaming horde. Take out your hockey stick and use it as a sword. Never get the we be ignored. We'll find out where the talk is stored and draw rude pictures on the board. It's not insulting. We're revolting.